A new era in Sudan following mass protests. A military council is to rule the country after its former president's removal and arrest. A two-year transitional period will be in place, but how smooth is that likely to be? And does that satisfy the protesters? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the programme. I'm Hala Mahiyadeen. In Sudan, protesters have been calling for a complete change of the political system. What they've got is an end to the 30-year rule of Omar al-Bashir through a military coup. But the alternative is unlikely to satisfy many. The defence minister says Omar al-Bashir was removed and arrested and the army will now be in charge for the next two years. The constitution has been suspended. Parliaments, the central government and regional governments have all been dissolved. And a state of emergency has been declared. This is what the defence minister had to say. The Supreme Committee decided to implement what was not in the mind of other people. And... Uh, a transitional period of two years, the armed forces will take power with a representation of the people to pave the way for the Sudanese people to live in dignity. And here I declare in my capacity as the defense minister, chairman of the Supreme Committee to get rid of this regime and to arrest the head of the regime in a safe place. And I declare, being the Minister of Defense and the Chairman of the Committee, to get rid of this regime and to arrest the head of the regime in a safe place. I also declare the formation of a military transitional council to supervise the two-year period to cancel the constitution of Sudan for 2005, to declare the state of emergency for three months and ban for one month for, from 10 uh, the evening to 4 in the morning. Airspace is closed for 24 hours and all terminals are closed until further notice. To solve all the presidency and the cabinet and the undersecretaries will be entitled to perform the work needed. The governments of the governorates will be solved and the mayors, governors will do the needed job. Normally, work will go as it is in the judiciary, the constitutional uh, court and uh, to call all the military groups to join us in building the country to keep and maintain the life, the ordinary life of the citizens. No revenge, no aggression, no attacks on property, keeping and preserving honor. The general order, the public order will be always there. We will fight crimes in all its shapes. Ceasefire will be declared all over Sudan. Well, let's take a look at how we got to this point. Omar al-Bashir came to power through a military coup in 1989. He was then appointed chairman of a transitional government and dissolved political parties and trade unions. In 1993, he abolished the military government and declared himself the president of Sudan. In 2005, his government signed a deal to end a 21-year-long civil war between the North and the South. Bashir was indicted by the International Criminal Court over war crimes in the uh, Darfur region. That's in 2009. And in 2011, he oversaw the cessation of South Sudan into an independent state. He was last re-elected president in 2015. Most opposition parties boycotted that vote. 
And in March, Bashir stepped down as chairman of the ruling National Congress Party after months of nationwide protests against his rule. Well, let's bring in our guests. Joining us from Khartoum is Hafiz Mohammed, the director of Justice Africa. In Washington, D.C. is David Shin, a former deputy chief of mission at the U.S. Embassy in Sudan and a former ambassador to Ethiopia. And in Kenya, on Skype, is Hajuj Kuka, a member of Jirifna, a non-violent resistance movement in Sudan. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Um, if I could start with you, uh, Hajuj Kuka, uh, your protest group was among those calling for Omar al-Bashir to go. He has now gone. Are you satisfied? Not at all. We were calling for Tuskut Best, just fall. And we were talking about the whole regime. We are talking about the whole system. And his vice president, Ibn Auf, who came out in part right now and said that he's the new leader and the stated in two years of transitional government and three months of uh, curfew, is one of the people who is calling to kill the protesters. So we're not satisfied at all. The struggle continues and nothing changed. And we think we have the momentum. We're very strong. Uh, people are out in numbers. There's millions out in the street. Everybody's with us. Even people uh, in the army, uh, mid-level and lower, younger folks are with us. So we we think we can do it and we're going to continue. OK, let me turn to you, Hafiz Mohammed. Um, Bashir um, has now gone, but what we have now, it's not satisfying the protesters. What do you think will happen next? Yeah, I think the people are going to continue to protest because uh, this is just like uh, a palace coup. It's nothing happening. The issue is not only Bashir, it's the whole regime. And now it's clear, on my way to the studio, I pass through many protesters in the center of Khartoum, and they start shouting slogans, refusing the whole statement. And this statement totally is not satisfactory to them. And I think what they're going to do is continue protesting until a real change happens. And uh, they don't actually accept this because uh, it's clear it's not addressing the main issues, which is changing the regime, uh, putting the, the country in the path of restoring genuine uh, democracy, rule of law, accountability. That is what is missing. The statement is vague, is not clear. And clear is just seemed to them like a palace coup. And I don't think that is going to be satisfactory to them, to Have all you... these young men and women protesting for... Yeah. If yeah. I, I, sorry to cut you off. If I were to play devil's advocate, though, Hafiz Mohammed, I would say that the army uh, have said they are willing to transition to a democracy and this will take two years. Um, that's the time period they have given, uh, presumably so that the country can get ready for a transition to, to, to new elections. Realistically, what the, what the protesters are calling for, this simply can't happen overnight. Yeah, but, but the problem is, if you want to really start a transition, I think you have to do it correctly. And you have to start, initiate a correct road for the transition. But if the status quo stays as it is, and all these people who are now in the uh, Supreme Council of uh, the Change are the same people, the same mentality, no change, I don't think that is going to take us. And the other thing is, two years transition is not enough. Sudan have too many problems. 30 years of the regime of the NCP have created also problems, and a lot need to be uh, done to actually put the country in the right path to, uh, for democracy and democratic transition. And I think that has to start from the first day. But I think just this statement, I don't think it's satisfactory. And I don't think the mentality of these people who are actually uh, taking the lead is the, it's the same mentality, and I don't think they're going to bring the change which is needed, which is put the country on the path of a genuine transition to democracy. I think this is, for people, it's just a waste of time, and it's just repeating, uh, replicating what's going on for 30 years. And I don't think that is going to be acceptable, and I don't think that is going to satisfy the protesters, and I'm sure they're going to continue protesting until the real change happens. OK, let's bring in the, 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 the wider view then. David Shin, uh, you're in Washington, D.C. What do you make of the developments this Thursday? Uh, clearly, if the overwhelming majority of the protesters are dissatisfied with the uh, current plan laid out by the military, there's going to be continuing difficulties in the country. 
and something better will have to develop over time. Uh, I can't obviously speak for individual countries around the world, but I suspect there's a lot of skepticism over a plan that goes out at least two years before um, the authority of government is turned over to civilians. Uh, I don't understand why it would take that long. I think there has to be a short period where you maintain stability in the country, and probably only the military can do that. But that can be negotiated with the protesters, and it certainly can be a much reduced period of time uh, with some important changes in leadership also. Uh, what changes in leadership, David Shin, do you think should be brought in then? I think the, uh, the military probably has to identify some of the key civilian leaders uh, that have been involved in the protest movement, or perhaps technocrats who are not necessarily part of the uh, protest movement, and make them part of the, uh, of the current government. In effect, um, bring them into positions where their views are taken into account now, not two years from now. Okay, Hajuj uh, Kuka, uh, who would you like to see uh, brought in instead of the, 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 the plan that's been outlined by the military? Okay, so let's, let's, let's make this clear. We've been fighting, these protests have been going on, on from mid-December. From then, the protesters have come together, they're united, they have a very clear vision for the transitional into democracy. So we have, we all work under the Freedom and Change Declaration, and within that, we have a very clear way of how we want the country to be ruled through a, a transitional period that will fix the country and get us ready for democracy. And this period we had already set for four years, we had already decided on a technocrat government, and we had already decided that this will be a civilian government, not uh, a military government. So we are very united, and we know exactly what we want. And that's why we know how to, uh, we know exactly what we want, so that's why we know that what this government is bringing is not what we want. So it's not a period where we just want the government to come and we want to figure it out. This is not where we're at right now. Girifna is 10 years old. The struggle against this government has been going on for 30 years. As a movement against this government, we're very well established, we're very well connected, we are very well working together. Let me pursue this point uh, in Khartoum with Hafiz Mohammed. We heard from Hajuj Kuka there that the, op the, the protest movements have lined up the outlines of a, 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 a caretaker administration, civilians they would like to see uh, as part of this. The army clearly have not gone with that option. What do you think that signals uh, about the army's intentions? Do you think, Hafiz Mohammed, that the army does not plan on ceding power at all? Yeah, I think, uh, believe me, I, I don't think they understand uh, clearly the demand of the protesters. And there is a number of groups who are actually leading this protest, like the professional union, the other uh, political parties and other use uh, group. And I think their demand is clear. And they came out with clear political statement how they want uh, the transitional period to be shaped. And I think that needs to be addressed. There is a couple of issues which is facing Sudan, not only start from this regime, but from since Sudan independent over six years ago. And these issues have to be addressed. I think we need to address the root causes of conflict in Sudan, which has led to secession of South Sudan. We need to end the marginalizations. We need to uh, we need to address the issue of poverty, destitution, and equality within society, and also that need time and need rethinking. And I don't think that uh, the way this uh, uh, statement came actually showed that these people understand how to carry out this change. I think they have to negotiate with these civilians uh, organization, which is leading the, the the protest, and agree with them on a clear roadmap. For transition and in that also include the terms of the transition and i don't think two years is enough because we have war all over the places we have more than four million displaced and refugees we have poverty i think we need to establish a good transition to ensure the next stage of democracy is sustainable i think uh, learning from october 1964 and and april 1985 a short transition is not good is not going to address the problems. I think we need a long transition. There is a couple of issues. There is accountability. There is transitional justice. All these issues need to be ad addressed, and also the constitutional principle. Until we address that, then we're not going to have a, a genuine uh, and a proper 
uh, democratic change. Okay. And I think we need to work on that. And the, 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 the military have to consult the people. They okay. don't have to take action alone without consulting these groups. Because otherwise, this is going to fall, and people are not going to trust them and are not going to wait for them, I think. And, okay. and the protest is not going to end. OK. Uh, David Shin, you have, uh, you have worked uh, in Sudan. Uh, you have been uh, in Ethiopia as well. Uh, from your experience in the region, uh, do you think the army is capable of going into listening mode uh, to the extent that Hafiz Mohammed has outlined? They're certainly capable of it. The question is whether they have the will to do it. I, I agree with, with Hafiz that there has to be negotiation now between the protest groups and, and the military. Uh, it's true that the issues that he described will take far longer than two years to resolve. But the immediate problem is who is going to be in control of the country uh, right now? And there has to, this has to be a, a, an effort to, to maintain control on the one hand, uh, so that someone is making decisions and doing it in a relatively peaceful way. And, and inevitably, that involves the military. Uh, they've got to be part of the discussion because they have the guns. Uh, but there have to be negotiations uh, with the protesters right now. Um, Hajuj Kuka, do you think the protest movement is willing to work with the military? Do you think there is a, a scope for manoeuvring to work with the military through this transitional period? Not this military, not this military, not even now, not this government. We, there, it, the statement has already come out from uh, the Freedom and Changed uh, Declaration. We're not going to negotiate with this government. We do not hold this government as our government, and we're going to fight against it. It has to fall. So it's, it's putting us back to the same step. This is not a government that wants to negotiate. The way they started, the way they took over power, and the way they didn't negotiate, they didn't talk to us, means... Um, we, we can't just deal with them. So there's not going to be a negotiation at all. But what and other mi military is there? I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. What other military is there? That, that is the military that you have. We, to, to move on, it seems that two sides now are, are at absolutely loggerheads. How do you progress from here? So, so basically, we were, we were, Sudan was the, who was ruling Sudan was the military Islamic dictatorship. So these are the leaders who were the country leaders and the government itself and the army. So when we went to protest and we, on April 6th, decided to go to the military headquarters so they will defend us against the national uh, security services who were fighting us at the time, people from the military stood against the orders from Ibn Auf, the guy who's now running it, and instead of dispersing us, stood next to us and defended us, even fought, and some of them got killed, defending us from the National Intelligence Services. So these are the people we want. These are the people we want to take over power. They're the ones we want to uh, become the army. So we feel the first step towards reaching a Sudan that is uh, peaceful and can go forward is to get rid of this army, to get rid of Ibn Auf, the leadership, and to keep the core of the army, which is the middle level and younger officers. Okay. But the upper, the upper, the first five people whatsoever from this people, um, from the army, we cannot negotiate with them. We cannot sit with them on the same table. They are part of the problem. They need to go. Okay, David Shin in Washington, D.C., uh, we heard there about different layers uh, within the army. Uh, is there a fear uh, on, a, on, a, on a wider regional level that we could see the army uh, as, a, as a whole fragment? Because the one person who were keeping these uh, disparate factions together was Omar al-Bashir. I suppose that's possible. It's difficult for me sitting in Washington to know about it, the schisms within the military. And if uh, your, your other guests are correct and these schisms exist, uh, that scenario can play out. I'm not in, in a position to judge that. Uh, but it's also possible that these schisms may not exist to that extent. And one thing you want to avoid at this point is uh, widespread bloodshed in the country. That would be the worst of, um, of all outcomes. Uh, if, there's, if there is a way to negotiate uh, with the military, and perhaps there's not, uh, but if there is a way, I think it should be tried. And if it is found to be impossible, then obviously these protests are going to go on pretty much as they are today. Uh, Hafiz Mohammed in uh, Khartoum, 
the, the, the threat of violence, the fear of violence is something which looms large here. If the military are not willing to enter into a negotiation, uh, do you worry that there could be bloodsheds? Yeah, I think, I think uh, there is a way of avo avoiding bloodshed because I think Sudanese are wise enough to avoid it. And now, if the mal NCP militias are being put out of functions, that will help because uh, they are not disciplined and they will do their best to try and stop any change. But at least for uh, that is being, to some extent, eliminated. There might still be some elements somewhere who are ready to, uh, you know, to resist and to fight on, not to allow a genuine change to happen. But I think uh, for the army to ensure to got the support of the people, he have to take certain steps, he have to consult with the people. If they don't do that, then uh, I don't think the protester is going to stop, and that might risk more violence, because if the protests con uh, continue, it, it might be, they might be uh, faced with some attack or some, because there's too many elements, there's too many militias and very military groups still some, might, might be some of them out there. But we, what we want is for the army to genuinely engage with the political, uh, with, the, with the people, uh, with the protesters, to ensure that he took everyone with, with them on the changes and to ensure that we have uh, a smooth transition to democracy. And that happened. Because uh, this, uh, most of these generals are not blameless. Some of them are actually... They, uh, they take some of the blame of the regime for its 30 years. And for them, really, to restore the credibility, they have to talk to the people, they have to take the opinion of the people on the account, and have to ensure that we have a genuine transition. Just saying, OK, we have a two years interim period, and then we have election, that is not good enough at all. OK, uh, let me move to you, Hajush Kuka. Oh, do you, are you worried that this could escalate further? Uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, that's always a worry. I mean, and, and up to now, like, about 80 people got killed. A lot of people got injured. So, yes, there is always the worry. But um, I don't think it's going to escalate to the point of uh, civil war or people fighting. I feel like Ibn Auf has always been known that he doesn't have the support of his own army. People are not excited about him. His own army are not excited about him. And I think once the people... Once the army finds that the people are rising against him, they're going to let him go. And they're going to, um, the split in the army is going to be very clear. It's going to be a split from the leadership, a few people on top, and the rest of the army. And I think the army has already stood with the people and they're already sitting with them in the streets. And I don't think they would, it will be in them to actually use their guns and their machine guns to actually kill fellow civilians. They were not trained to kill Sudanese people and they're not going to do it unlike the national security services and the militias uh, that the other guest was talking about. And they have been almost neutralized. So I think now the struggle is even easier. OK, um, we're, we're fast running out of time, gentlemen. So just uh, quickly, a final words, very, very quick, if you will. Uh, we'll start with David Shin. What do you think will happen next? I'm hopeful that it uh, will end without any more widespread bloodshed. Uh, I'm also hopeful that uh, there, in fact, can be uh, useful negotiations quickly between the protesters and the military to come up with a plan that is far better than the one that has been proposed so far and that will shift uh, responsibility to civilian, uh, a civilian government uh, quickly. Well, and I'm afraid we have run out of time, but thank you very much, uh, all three gentlemen, for that uh, discussion. Great to have uh, all your views there. That's uh, Hafiz Mohammed, David Shin and Hajuj Kuka taking part in the discussion. And thank you, too, for watching. You can catch up on Inside Story anytime on our website, aljazeera.com. The discussion, of course, will continue online. To have your say, go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story, and I'm at Halamohyadeen. From me and the whole team here, bye for now.